Okay, so welcome to the Oneness Connection. Today we're going to be exploring the experience with animals and animals as communication with animals and also animals as departed souls and how to communicate with them as departed souls. And with me today is a specialist on this. It's Rob Gutter, who is a best-selling and award-winning author, paranormal investigator. He's also a medium for humans and more especially for animals right now. So welcome to the show, Rob. Thank you, Deborah. Thanks for having me. So Rob, you have a number of very popular and amazing books about pets. Tell us a little bit about your books first. So there are a, there, there's a series called Pets in the Afterlife. And in the series, I give examples of how pets communicate. And I teach people um, what signs to look for so that they don't need to contact a medium. They can actually find them themselves. It's really about being aware. Um, also, pets... Pets will also give signs uh, the way that they did in life. So they'll make noises in certain places. They'll they'll appear shadows in certain places that they used to hang out in um, and, and do things like that. So one of the things that we touched on whenever we were just checking in a few moments ago was about the deep connection between pets and human beings. And you were just commenting that it was much more for many people than with a fellow human being. Would you like to share more about that? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been, it's been proven in scientific studies that we, um, we often grieve more deeply for the loss of a pet than we do for a, a fellow human. And there are, there are multiple reasons for that. The biggest reason being is that we raise our, our pets to be like children and and we look at them like children and as as humans children are supposed to outlive their parents um because we do the same things we 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 teach them uh we teach them language we teach them routine we you know they know dinner time they know uh we teach them how to how to go to the bathroom outside we take them to the the vet we take them to school and uh we do all the same things so we expect them in our subconscious to live longer than we do, but because their lives are short, um, it's really intense grief. And and because that's uh, that's why we grieve so deeply. And some people never really get past it. Mm, yeah, I, I had mentioned that I did a session with someone where their partner worked twenty four seven with a with a dog, and. I didn't know whenever I connected with with her, but I felt the sadness in the field of her partner. And I said, is there a loss in the family? Has there been a, a recent loss? And she says, no. And then she said, yes, there was his dog that he worked with. And it was such an amazingly deep connection. I have never seen a connection like that before. You know, they worked 24 seven together. It was with um in um specialized police force and um i could see so she did a session with me and then he did mm -hmm. and i could see that they had a virtually telepathic communication all i would have to do was look at the dog and the dog would know it was it was just amazing and i'm sure you've seen amazing experiences like that as well i have and i, I have books um, and when you have that kind of deep connection, I, I call those heart dogs because those are the dogs that that understand you and you understand them. Um, they can anticipate what you're thinking. You can anticipate what they're thinking. Um, and they're the ones that remain very close to you in spirit. They, they often, in, in my experience, they often become spirit guides to us. Mm, that's interesting because I had that impression as he was training his new partner his new dog partner I mm -hmm. could feel the dog in his field present supporting both of them isn't that interesting that is yeah it and it's true that um that our our dogs in spirit will come back and they will actually train the new dog that we adopt um I, I found that to be very very common um some people will tell me that their new pet that never met their pet their pet the past will show some of the same habits 
And that's because their pet who has passed has come back to train the new pet to do something they used to do. So we will know they're still around. Mm, that's really cool. I also have the impression, and I'll be curious to hear you, your thoughts about this as well. I have the impression that many will reincarnate as well. Many of the pets that we loved and wanted to have with us and want to be with us will reincarnate in another animal body. Yeah, they they will reincarnate. And my, well, my experience has been that they they wait for us to come back and then we all come back together. Um, so because they often the ones that I've connected to have said uh, they want to be in the light waiting to make our transition easier for, for us. Um, because if my pets aren't waiting for me, then I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, got it. So animals have souls. Would you say that? Oh gosh, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> People who have said that they don't have souls are kind of it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, so so that said, a soul really is the physical energies within us that combine with our memories and our personality and the knowledge that we've gained from this life we've lived. And, and every living thing has a soul. I mean, even, you know, even a spider has a soul because it's, it's living energy. And what I found is that after we pass that, that soul, that living energy makes a choice to either cross over to the other side. And that's what I call a spirit, or it chooses to stay earthbound at a location that it's aware of or, or lived or died. And I call that an earthbound ghost. So it's the same energy, but the location makes makes for differences. And where do pets end up hanging out? Do they have a choice? They do have a choice. Um, so 99.5% of all pets cross over. And that's because, you know, as you know, as a cat mom, you know that your cat is going to go to a place where they find comfort. And that's really what happens. So when when our pets pass and the doorway to the other side opens, the, the tunnel, they will sense goodness and peace and love and they will cross over. Um, only in rare occasions will they stay behind. And I've only met one ghost dog who stayed behind because his mom was still alive and he loved the place he lived in the house. And the other two were cats. Interesting. So is there a difference between an animal communicator and an animal medium, Rob? Yeah, I well, I, I've had to learn this because people will ask me if I can communicate with their living pet. And I, I can't. I don't have that gift. So I call that an animal communicator. Um, I, I call myself a pet medium because I can only connect to pets who have passed and read their energy. Um, the only dogs that I can connect to in, in living dogs are my own dogs. <laughs> so that's a special gift. And I think that's separate. Um, and, and you have both gifts. Mm -hmm. That's, that's pretty awesome. I call them superpowers, by the way, because I like superheroes. <laughs> so one of the things you touched on in your book, Rob, which is a really <clears throat> sensitive topic for a lot of people, is how do you deal with your with your uh, a dog parent or a cat parent or any other kind of animal parent? How do you deal with when it's time to let them go? Because that was a really sensitive topic and one that's apparently causes a lot of questions of guilt, guilt afterwards and, of course, grieving, obviously. Yeah, it, it is probably one of the most difficult things we could ever do as a pet parent. Um, mm -hmm. And I've had to make that decision um, three times. Um, it, it's just heartbreaking. Um, one thing that pet parents need to know is that <laughs> that our pets, once we once we understand that they want to go and we help them achieve that, is that they give they they're always appreciative that we had number one the the wherewithal to understand the signs that they were giving us like when they isolate from from people in the family or when they stop eating when they stop interacting and playing and so forth um those are signs from your pet that 
they're ready to go. Um, and when they, when they no longer want to engage. Uh, also, it also, they, it also um, is important uh, in helping them cross over because it's a recognition that we have learned their lesson, which is unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And so, what's that? So they don't want us to feel guilty. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's a really important one. And you had several experiences about that. You're talking about Sprite in, in your book about communicating. Do you want to share that story? Sure. Uh, little, little Sprite was a, uh, he was a dachshund, uh, a dachshund mix that we got from a rescue at 10 years old. And both his parents were senior citizens who went into assisted living. And he came into a rescue that we worked with. We worked with animal rescues, dog rescues, really for 15 years. Um, done a lot of fostering, transporting, and all of it. Um, so Sprite was going to be our next foster dog. And when we when I picked him up two hours away from where I lived, he was this poor little guy was a mess. He was he was overweight, he had an ear infection, his teeth were all rotted. Um the poor thing, he his teeth were so bad that I, I had to drive with the windows down in the wintertime because the smell was terrible. Yeah. So yeah. we immediately got him into the vet. He had 22 teeth removed. Then he became a happy little guy. Um, and when it, he was 16, we had to make the decision because a tumor had burst in his nose. And uh, after a, a nighttime ER visit, I, I, I convinced them to let me take him back to say goodbye to our other pets, which is important uh, because it gives our pets closure, our living pets, mm -hmm. if you can do it. Um, so we did. And after Sprite passed, he sent us a butterfly. Now, uh, pets, humans and, and animals can help influence things in nature to act oddly. They have to behave oddly. And usually on a date that is um, relevant to birthday, anniversary, passing, adoption, something like that. So the day uh, after Sprite passed, um, we were in the backyard with our other three dogs and a yellow and black butterfly came in the backyard and it it acted oddly because it, it flew down around the other dogs and it stayed there for about 15, 20 minutes and they did not go after it. So if you have... If you have dachshunds, they always chase after everything. <laughs> <clears throat> Our dogs did not. So we knew it was from Sprite. Um, over Since Sprite passed in 2013, um, whenever we're, we are around the Sprite's anniversary of passing, we will usually see a yellow and black butterfly, including when we were on vacation in Ireland. <laughs> Beyond time and space, huh? <laughs> so spirits can send they send signs to us anywhere, any place, any time in the world. It doesn't matter where they, where we are. I also love how you got the same message from several people about Sprite communicating that it was okay. Yes, um, yeah. My my friend uh, Jill in Maryland was reading was reading the Pets in the Afterlife book. And she said, as she was reading that chapter on Sprite, about Sprite's butterfly, a yellow and black butterfly landed on her stomach. So Sprite was acknowledging <clears throat> that she was reading about his, his story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also uh, remember that there were several who perceived Sprite um, also being very joyful, running around joyfully and playing. Yeah. Yeah, so I so two uh, I'm connected to I'm I'm friends with two different mediums. One is uh, my friend Troy Klein, who is a fellow medium on the Inspired Ghost Tracking team, and the other one is Ruth Larkin. She's known as the Beantown Medium in the Boston, Massachusetts area, and uh, both of them <laughs> sent me text messages after um, after Sprite had passed, and they both conveyed that very thing that that he was happy and bouncy and joyous just like he was um before he started to slow down mm -hmm. and and that's really for, for all the pet parents listening once our pet passes 
all their physical limitations, all their sicknesses, all their illnesses, whether they're, they're, they've gone blind or they've gone deaf, all of those things don't matter anymore because that's a physical thing. As energy, they can hear and see and do anything. Um, to me, it's really hard to explain what it's like being a, being a soul of energy because I don't explain it as being, you know, running through fields or, or, or doing things like that because um, it, to me, it's not that way, but they will project that kind of image because we can identify with it. So it'll bring us peace. And how, what ways do they communicate with us once they've passed? Cause you've mentioned there are many in your book. Oh gosh. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of throw this back on you for a minute because I wanted to ask you if any of your pets in spirit have communicated with you in the home, whether visually or audibly uh, dreams. You, you know, my impression is that most of them know that I'm at peace with their passing and just have gone on. I have, I have a really, there was a really dear one. My, there, there are two four-legged friends, cats here, and they had a third buddy who mm -hmm. ended up being hit by a car. And that was really unfortunate because it was a, very rare that I saw all three of them. They were always together. <laughs> cats don't do that, you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> They would go walking down the road at dusk into the vineyard, you know, up the road, and they would bring back, you know, mice together. They would just do all kinds of things. And so when the gray one left, I was quite surprised that um, Miss Jyoti, uh, whenever I showed her the the body, it was like her attitude was like, well, you know, it's not a big deal because he's, you know, he's still here. Or he's, you know, that's not him, which I thought was actually you know, from a human perspective, we go, well, wouldn't she be sad about that? But it felt to me like she was perceiving a bigger experience where she knew that the physical was not, not her buddy, if that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> so it, it does make sense. And, and before I discuss different signs, I'll mm -hmm. share a similar story that when our dog Franklin passed away, mm -hmm. Franklin is, uh, Franklin is the stockson behind me. He's mm -hmm. red, red dachshund. And that's my dog, Dolly. By the way, all my dogs are on the covers of these books, all the dogs that mm. pass. Mm. Um, so when Franklin passed away, um, he was 16 and a half. And um, he, being a dachshund, he never missed three treat time at night. We, I would say three <laughs> treat time is at 7.30 at night. Mm. So the night he passed, the, the, the night of the, of the day he passed, I had, noted, I had called out three treat time. And our other three dogs lined up and they were in a row, but they left space for Franklin uh, right, between, right between all of them. So I knew they could see him. Mm -hmm. I knew they could see him. Um, and then, of course, he he also made my left arm go ice cold because he he took all of the the heat energy from from the air and absorbed it so that he could solidify. Mm -hmm. um, so and this was in May. So my left arm was ice cold. My right arm was very hot <laughs> and I knew he was there. So there were two signs right there that Franklin did not miss three treat time, even from the other side. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. So he, he was, he showed up and they were, they were, he was visible to them. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. So, so for the, for the folks that are listening, watch your pets because I explain in the Pets in the Afterlife books that pets, uh, living pets, have different cones and rods in their eyes. It enables them to see faster movement in which spirits move because we use high-speed cameras in paranormal investigation. And dogs can hear at different frequencies that we can't hear, like a dog whistle. Um, and spirits communicate at different frequencies that humans can't often hear. So that's why they can hear and see them. So watch your pets and they will let you know that there's a spirit visiting. Yeah, I have noticed that sometimes with the cats, especially Miss Jo T, she will, <laughs> she will look like over my shoulder or near me, and I know that she's seeing either my guides or or other <laughs> entities who are around. Yeah, cats are really interesting like that. I'm not so sure that dogs have the same 
they have a different sensitivity I think a different sensibility yeah so you mentioned the the temperature changing and I know that's a really big one for for spirits um sound um moving objects right like shoes <laughs> Oh yes, they can. They can absolutely do that. So when Buzz passed away, um, I had a roommate at the time who was not really a nice person, and Buzz didn't like him either. <laughs> um, so the right after the week that Buzz passed away, um, I was uh, I remember waiting in my my truck outside for my roommate to come out so we could go grocery shopping, and he came out screaming because he saw he. <laughs> he said he saw a sneaker move from one side of the hallway to the other side of the hallway and buzz had an affinity for destroying sneakers um so it, you know when he came out and he told me this hmm. i said oh i'm so sorry and in my mind i said a oh, good boy buzz <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he was getting his revenge wasn't he he was he was <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> so yeah so they can move things um and, and and here's a story for you because you're a cat mom. Mm -hmm. I was doing a reading for a cat and it was 1030 at night and I was sitting here in my office and it was it was dark and everybody else had gone to bed. Our dog, two of our dogs are snoozing next to me. And this cat says, said to me, I like to go on a bookcase and ju uh, jump up on a bookcase and knock things over. And sure enough, three books came right off my bookcase behind me and I must have jumped about a foot. I was so scared. <laughs> and so I told the cat, okay, you don't have to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, noises are are big. Um, you you may hear them going up the stairs. Mm -hmm. Um, you may hear a, a bark or a meow that sounds like it's coming from another room, and that's because it takes so much energy for them mm -hmm. uh to, to create an audible noise. Mm -hmm. So and meows on the too. floor. That's another thing too. What's that? Nails on the floor, especially if you have a dog. Um, and they always like to go in the kitchen, of course, because that's where the food is. Mm. And they're also dreams, appearances and dreams, right? Mm. Yeah, so dreams, I found that dreams are the easiest way for them to communicate. Mm. Because when we're awake, as adults, we are told to just dispel anything as, you know, just a coincidence. And, mm -hmm. and and Deborah, I've learned that there's no such thing as a coincidence when it comes to spirit. <laughs> so when we're asleep, our logical minds are asleep also. And that's how they're able to, to, mm -hmm. to come in. Um, and again, birthdays, anniversaries, and holidays are usually the times that they will come, come forth unless they need to tell us something like, like don't take that job <laughs> or, um, or drive a different way tomorrow. So warnings, they can yeah, warn, yep, warnings um, that, you know, they may, uh, they're also good at protecting us too when we meet people and we may feel a, uh, of course, everybody can read hu human energy. So, uh, but they, they will also enhance that for us and let us know whom to avoid and whom to, to go to. Um, I always tell people they have the ability to to pick up signs of, of people and pets who pass because have you ever gone into a big room full of people and felt like you needed to say hi or smile at someone and conversely stayed away from others? Yep. Yeah, and so that's happened to a lot of everybody really. And I tell people you're reading their energy mm -hmm. and that's what mediums do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did that start for you, Rob? It was not always, you were not always a pet medium, right? Right. I was a medium rare before. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I know. I, I, I love puns. I can't help it. <laughs> um, it. So my abilities were kind of, they, they were kickstarted when I was a teenager. My grandfather appeared to me. Uh, about six, seven months after he died. I was about 13 years old. Mm -hmm. and, and he scared the life out of me. He, I was petrified when I when I saw him. And I ran outside, of course. Um, but then when my puppy Buzz, the one pictured behind me here, um, mm -hmm. 
the wine runner. He, I was walking him. He passed away uh, as as a puppy at seven months old because his leash opened when I was walking him, and and he ran out in front of a car. And he was a white collar. And he was the one that reawakened everything. He gave me musical signs. He moved things. He led me to another dog that looked like him when I was on vacation. Um, I I heard him bark. I heard him go up the stairs. I, all kinds of crazy signs. And and he opened the door for me to learn how to communicate with other pets. That's amazing. That's an amazing gift from a, a pet friend. Oh, hmm. It is, and you know, Deborah, I had to, it, when we lose a pet tragically, it's so hard to understand why they pass that way. Mm. But, and it honestly, it took me many years to realize that that was Buzz's mission here. Mm. Buzz's mission was to live a very short life and be able to help me communicate with pets on the other side so I could bring peace to people around the world. Mm. And, I just, I'm so humbled to have this superpower. <laughs> um, and so, and, and I'm really elated that I'm able to communicate with pets because pets mean the world to me. Yeah. And it sounds like you do a lot, a lot of sessions or a lot of readings for pets. <laughs> I do. I do. And I do them on weekends um, because I, I was working full time as a meteorologist Um and I just retired. So now I'll be able to do many more. And hopefully I'll get through my, I, I'm booked out a year. And hopefully I'll get through them a lot faster now. Um, but it really, it's so rewarding to send somebody a reading. And I do them by email because I don't, I can't talk to somebody and also talk to the pet at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's too distracting. So I do them by email and connect with a picture. And um, it's so it's so rewarding to get an email from a pet parent that says, oh, my gosh, you know, you, this is exactly what they did or something. There's always one particular thing that really is a is a, a pinpoint, a trigger that they recognize. Mm, that identifies them. Yeah. So tell us about you have several books about messages from cats and messages from dogs, mm -hmm. departed, departed souls. Um, what are some of the ones that stand out the most for you? In the pets series, mm -hmm. okay. Um, so, pets in the afterlife three and four um, are are probably the ones that stand out the most because uh, pets three ha has uh, has two chapters. One about two of our dogs that we pa that passed in twenty twenty within five months of each other, mm -hmm. um, including my heart dog Dolly. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Pets in the Afterlife 4 is specifically about cats because I couldn't do one specifically about dogs and not do one specifically about cats. <laughs> um, but those those books have, those two books have something that number one and number two don't have, which are special chapters by licensed professionals who deal with people um, in coping with grief and loss. And they're both friends of mine. And what are the messages from the, the animals that, that are the most significant for you? Are there one or two that stand out? Um, well, I will tell you that that um, Dolly has been around me and she's proven she's been around me every single day since she passed, which is crazy. Dolly passed on October uh, 22nd, 2020. And ever since she passed, she's been sending me repeating numbers, angel numbers, if you will, every single day every day and that, she hasn't missed one day in in over four years um so yesterday would have been um well this week would have been the the anniversary of her passing yeah. um, so it's no surprise i'm talking about her <laughs> um, so numbers are another way that people can recognize signs from their pets um and it doesn't have to be a time. It doesn't have to be on the clock. It can be anywhere. Um, I have a weather station in my office um, and I've seen 44.4 degrees, for instance. <laughs> I've seen timestamps on email that were 333. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen license plates with repeating numbers. So it could be anywhere. It's really just about paying attention. 
Uh, is there a specific story that might have that you might have shared in one of those books that would be interesting for for listeners and and viewers? Um. Well, gosh, there's gosh, there's so many of so many. <laughs> um. I can tell you about a I can tell you about a reading that I did with uh with with a man who had uh, lost a lab a lab Labrador retriever, mm -hmm. um, and this is interesting because sometimes this really conveys the fact that sometimes when a pet gives us messages, we really have to figure it out. We have to try and put the pieces together. So back in um in the summertime uh, a couple of years ago, um. A gentleman wrote me and told me his black Labrador retriever had passed and he wanted to know any messages. And one of the things that the, the black lab told me was, was the number 512. And I didn't understand that. So I thought it was, I thought it could have been a time the dog passed uh, or a month the dog was adopted and a day and some, or, or passed or something, some significance. And I wrote him and I, I, I conveyed this to him and he, he wrote me back and he said, I understand all the things you said, except for 512, 512. So I said, well, you know, it may come to you. Um, eight months later, he wrote me back. And he said to me, you may not remember me, but I'm the guy with the black labs and the one that passed gave you this number 512. And, and he went on to say, full disclosure, I am a doctor. And he said, I was in the office today and I was seeing a patient and my patient had recently had a collapsed lung that he recovered from. And he said, I was sitting there coding it and the number was 512. And he said, that's what my dog passed from was a collapsed lung. Oh, oh wow. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. Only a doctor's dog would know that. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> um, you know, coming back to the the questions about guilt, I think one of the things that people might wonder is, do animals continue to feel pain once they pass? You know, what is the state? So do you want to say a bit about that? Sure. Um, so once, once we're out of our physical bodies, all that pain that we experienced is no longer part of us. Mm -hmm. So So they don't experience it anymore. And they really do become whole. Um, I remember connecting to, um, a, 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 an older dog and, uh, the first thing he said to me was, it's all clear now. And I, I wasn't sure what that meant. Um, but he said, it's all clear. And his mom wrote back and said he had cataracts and he was virtually blind uh, and he, and now he can see again. And that, that just made her day. So. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever physical ailments we have disappear once that energy leaves the body and, and couples with our memories and personality. Um, and I will say that some, so, so, so some pets, all the pets maintain their personalities. And if they don't like to share their toys, that will come through. There was this one dog uh, that I did a reading for. Um, his name was, I think his name was Poopy, actually. <laughs> his name is Poopy. He's a, little, he's a little white dog. He's really cute. But he didn't like, he told he told me that he he didn't want his brother, and I didn't even know if there was an, a living dog, another living dog in the house. He didn't want his brother to have his favorite toy, which was a yellow squeaky bone. <laughs> and um, so when I wrote to the pet parent, they said, oh my gosh, yeah, he... He has a yellow squeaky bone. He coveted it and he never wanted that other dog to play with it. Yeah. So, so the message was take the yellow squeaky bone and put it near my ashes and don't let the other dog near it. <laughs> <laughs> Do they sometimes have philosophical messages for their their human counterparts? Yeah, gosh, they do. So um, I, I've been, some of the most, amazing ones have actually come from rabbits that I've connected with. Um, one rabbit named uh, Wudge, W-D-G-E, said that love is nothing to apologize for. And that was in reference to uh, making the, the decision to help them pass out of pain. Oh. 
Mm. So that was pretty profound. Um, yeah, there there are, are many more. I I can't, of course, I can't think of them right now because you put me on the spot. But that was <laughs> that was the most important one that I can think of. Mm, yeah, I love animals. They're so amazing. Um, do they? receive the prayers and the energy and the thoughts from their their um pet parents as you call them sure so um so that leads me to uh, the, a discussion of energy because mm -hmm. because their energy they do receive those those thoughts and and prayers of it, uh, because those are positive emotional energy mm -hmm. that's positive emotional energy thoughts prayers uh, love, um, and as spirits, they they require energy to get strong enough to communicate. And there are two types of energy. There are physical energies like heat, light, water, and electricity. Spirits who have crossed and earthbound ghosts both use those physical energies to get strong enough. Just like we talked about Franklin uh, taking the, the uh, energy from the, the movement of air molecules and making it colder. But there's a difference with earthbound ghosts and spirits. So spirits of our pets draw on love, faith, and hope. And prayer is a positive emotional energy also. Uh, it doesn't have to be a religious prayer. It could be any kind of prayer. Um, conversely, earthbound ghosts draw on negative emotional energies like fear and anxiety, depression and anger. And ghosts because they use that emotional energy doesn't it, it mean their personality is bad it just means because they're earthbound it's their location and that's what they use and they also emit it so if you live in a home with a ghost they're also making you feel fear anxiety depression and anger um conversely if a spirit is visiting you feel warmth and calmness and peace and love so that's the energy discussion. <laughs> yeah, that's that echoes my experience 100%. Um, one of the things you mentioned in your book, and I, th I feel like this is important for pet parents who may be grieving to remember, is that if they don't perceive signs or feel their departed pet buddy, then mm -hmm. it's probably the grief that's it, grief makes it very difficult to perceive anything else. Yes. So grief is a negative emotional energy. And grief can act as a block mm -hmm. for uh, for positive emotional energy. And if your grief is that intense, they may not have enough energy to get through it. So what they do is they will often go to somebody else and give them a sign. Uh, and, and let them know that they're okay. So they may come into someone else's dreams, knowing that that person will tell you that they've dreamt of your pet and your pet is okay. Or um, they uh, they may drop physical signs like, like a feather. Um, they may use feathers or pennies, or um, they may send a bird, for instance, like a cardinal, to stop and stare at you through the window and just stare and behave oddly. Um, and somebody else may notice that. Um, but don't be discouraged if you think you haven't received a, a sign because grief will block will block those things. Even dreams, grief will block dreams. Um, the best thing to do is to ask your pet to try and come into your dreams. Um, and you're right, it isn't until we acknowledge and accept their passing that it's easier for them to come through to us yeah and I find that um messages and information often come when the mind is occupied like cutting vegetables in the kitchen or you know, doing going for a walk whenever you're not thinking about something like that so yeah so yeah, setting the intention asking and setting intention as you said is a good way to receive mm -hmm. and, and and finding a peaceful place like you said when you're when you're taking a walk um i often get messages when i'm driving or if you're in the shower and you're relaxing um, um your mind is at a more peaceful place and you might hear things too i mean i i've heard some 
I always joke that I, I I've had so many dead people in the shower with me. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I, I felt a few around you before we connected. Actually, when I was preparing, I did. Uh oh. Um. Yeah, I there was a, there was kind of a funny incident where my my friend Kathy's mother, who had just passed, had come to me. Um, I was I was in the shower and I heard her say, "You need to call Kathy. Um, you need to call Kathy right now." And and she said, um, "The lawnmower that Kathy is is using is defective and it's going to hurt her." And I said, "What? It's ten thirty at night. I'm not going to call Kathy." And you know, here I am talking in the shower to myself. Mm -hmm. um, but she was so persistent that I actually called my friend Kathy, and my friend Kathy worked at the golf course. And I told her what her mother said, and she said, "Okay, thanks for the thanks for the warning." She said she had the, the lawnmower looked at um, before she started it, and it turned out that the blade was loose. So um, her mother gave her a warning in time. So I said, "Please tell your mother to stop bothering me in the shower." <laughs> Respect your privacy a little bit. Somewhere there. I mean, we have to have some boundaries, right? <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> it's interesting because this is a little bit an aside, but whenever I was my abilities were developing, so one of my teachers was a medium, and um, it never interested me very much, and I didn't even really consider that I had those abilities. I, I could do intuitive readings and that kind of thing. And I was sitting in a farmhouse in Annecy. It's like an 1840s farmhouse. It's like five o'clock in the morning. I would get up quite early and meditate. And I felt this energy, my eyes were closed, but I felt this energy come in from my right side. And mm. this voice, this booming voice say, Deborah Moffat, and I jumped out of my skin. <laughs> you know? So there was, there was, a, there was, a, there was a, a male... Uh, departed soul who was aware that I could perceive him, but I wasn't aware of it yet. <laughs> it was like, it's really, really. Oh my gosh, that's that's pretty startling. <laughs> it was, and so I, because this teacher had is a medium, I understood that I could just set up my boundaries. And so what I told what I told this departed soul, I said, I'm meditating right now. Don't bother me. I had this, I set up this room in my inner space while I was trying to decide what I was going to do with these abilities. And there were two chairs, there was one for me and one for another soul, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, when I'm in this space, I'm available and we can connect. When I'm not there, don't come. And as soon as I said that, there was a there was a wall, or there was a glass wall which which was transparent from like the knees down with a corridor outside. And as soon as I said that, I saw the whole corridor fill up with departed souls wanting to come in and have attention oh my gosh oh be careful what you ask for <laughs> yeah well I, I didn't you know I only um I don't I'm not a medium but whenever I do sessions with people I do perceive their pets and their departed family members and you know birds <laughs> you know turtles whatever that's awesome. But I, but I don't let them, you know, it's a different experience. I don't let them come into my energy field, which is a different experience. I think mm -hmm. I think for you it's like I think mediums do do it quite a little bit differently, maybe. Hmm. Well, I when I do pet readings, I, I do them spe specifically because I'm ready to do them. Um otherwise I'm just I'm not focused. And I really it really takes <laughs> It really takes a lot of uh, a lot of focus. Yeah. But by the way, Dolly just gave me a sign because I happened to look over the clock when we were doing when we were talking, and it was eleven eleven. There's Dolly's sign of the day. Mm. Wow. So, Rob, as we come to a close, what would you like to share with listeners and viewers? Um, I would like to let everybody know that our, our pets will be waiting for us on the other side. They always appreciate when we have the courage and the strength to help them cross over. Um, they don't want us to grieve deeply for the rest of our lives. No. Um, they, they absolutely welcome when we, we adopt other pets um, and they will lead you to the next pet that you will adopt. Um, you may want to adopt one and then you'll actually wind up adopting another. I have many stories about that. Um, our pets will also uh, 
will also teach and, and guide our new pet mm -hmm. to have a habit that they did. And, and Deborah, it doesn't have to be a good habit. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> That's interesting. No. <laughs> um, but the thing is, they'll, they'll all be waiting for us on the other side. And, uh, and their greatest gift is unconditional love. And they don't want us to be sad for for the time that we had. In in fact, they want us to remember them, and um, and remember that time as being very very special. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Just feel the gratitude for their presence for showing mm -hmm. up with us. Yeah, they're such amazing beings. Mm. And so, Rob, how can people find you for your books for? The readings, which I guess I have to wait for a year or so before that's available. Well, for now, but that that's gonna that's gonna go by fast now that I'm okay. retired. Um, yes. So they can just go to robgutro.com or uh, petspirits.com if you can't spell my name. <laughs> um, and and I'm on Facebook and uh, Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and um, I'm not uh, I don't make a lot of videos because I have a face for radio, but, you know, um, <laughs> I, I make some. Um, and I love questions. If anybody has any questions, they're more than welcome to connect to me through social media uh, or by email, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay, so it's Rob, R-O-B, Gutro, G-U-T-R-O.com, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Rob, for sharing your wisdom and helping people to understand more about their pet their pet partners beyond the veil well thank you for having me deborah it's been really it's been really fun and uh, yeah. yeah really thank you so much it's my pleasure I look forward to doing it again sometime yeah